we want to maximize x1 subject to the equality constraint that x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is 12. And then we have another equality constraint and this function here, it's not a good function, it's not nice. Uh, if we check the Hessian matrix, uh, it has one positive eigenvalue and three equal eigenvalues of negative one. So it is an indefinite matrix. Uh, to facilitate solving this problem, uh, we can exploit the fact that if we square this summation here, which is a given number, so the square is 144, we get the sum of the squares plus double this quantity here. Uh, and so rather than working with this constraint, we can uh, convert it into the sum of the squares being equal to 104. Uh, we can proceed without using calculus or the KTT conditions uh, by using the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So we can take x2 plus x3 plus x4. Note that we are excluding x1, which is the objective function to be maximized. We can take x2 plus x3 plus x4 squared, and we can imagine that each one of those guys is multiplied by one. And then we can, by applying the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, this is upper bounded by one squared plus one squared plus one squared, that's one bracket. And then the other bracket is x2 squared plus x3 squared plus x4 squared. The nice thing is that we have an, we have an equality constraint with this sum plus x1. So we can express this in terms of x1. Moreover, after doing our step here, we have also a constraint uh, for the sum of the squares. And so this quantity here is 104 minus x1 squared. So now we have an inequality involving x1. We can simplify and rearrange the terms so we get a quadratic function that is less than or equal to zero. And so this um, quadratic function, it has zeros at those two values, three minus or plus square root 51, and then it is negative in between and positive elsewhere. So basically, the x1 uh, values that satisfy this inequality are the values between, so x1 is living between 3 minus square root 51 to 3 plus square root 51. Note that the variable x1 is itself the objective function to be maximized. And so it is upper bounded by 3 plus square root 51. The question is, is this upper bound achievable? Well, to obtain this upper bound, we used an inequality uh, here. Uh, basically, we applied the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And so can this be achieved with equality? And the answer is yes, we can do so uh, if uh, the variables are all equal to one another. And so x1 is equal to this quantity here. and uh, we can use, for example, the equality constraint to find the other three variables. If we want to go for the KTT conditions, and this is uh, nice to learn, you know, some uh, technical points, uh, the problem is that uh, if even after changing this function into this function, which is convex, we have now a non-affine convex function that is equal to 104. So in a convex program, the affine, you know, the equality constraints should be affine. And if we have a convex function, it should be, that is non-affine, it must be less than or equal to zero. So this is a problem, you know, so this is not a constraint that we can have in a convex program. And so the idea is that we will use the constraint that the sum of the squares is less than or equal to 104, or basically the sum of the squares minus 104 is less than or equal to zero. Now, because this function is a convex function, then uh, we have now a convex program. Okay, but the, you know, note that our original problem 
uh, should have an equal here. So this is something that we need to address. Now for the KKT conditions uh, to be uh, sufficient and necessary for this convex program, we need to check uh, Slater's condition. So now what if we choose all the variables to be equal to three? Then uh, the constraint that the sum of the variables is equal to uh, 12 is achieved. What about the inequality constraint? It will be achieved with strict inequality. And so we have a feasible point that satisfies the non-affine inequality constraint with strict equality. So Slater's condition is indeed satisfied. And if we solve this problem, the KKT conditions are sufficient and necessary. We still have the technicality that actually this problem is different from the original problem where we have an equal sign here. Now let's write the KKT conditions. Uh, the Lagrangian, what is the Lagrangian? So we are maximizing X1. So here we'll have minus X1 and then lambda. This is a Lagrange multiplier or a dual variable. It can be any real number. And this is our first, you know, or now it is the equality constraint. And this is our, uh, you know, modified constraint. And this mu, this dual variable must be greater than or equal to zero. Now stationarity will require that the first order partial derivatives are all equal to zero. What if the sum of the squares is strictly less than 104? So we have a complementary slackness. So complementary slackness in our problem here, it means that this product mu times x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared plus x4 squared minus 104, this product must be equal to zero. So if we assume that the inequality is satisfied with a strict inequality so this sum of the squares is strictly less than 104 so this bracket is non-zero and so to satisfy complementary slackness mu must be equal to zero so under this assumption mu is zero now if mu is equal to zero and if we look at any of those equations then it must be that lambda is zero but if mu is zero and lambda is zero then we have minus one is equal to zero, which does not make sense. So it must be the case that this inequality is satisfied with strict equality. So the sum of the squares is equal to 104, which is what we need so that our optimization problem is equivalent to the original problem. Okay, uh, that's it. So now we will we know now that this summation is equal to uh, 104. You know, this, the three variables x2, x3, and x4, they are equal. Okay, so we'll take now mu, uh, mu to be strictly greater than zero. Again, mu equals zero, it caused us trouble. Mu equals zero will require that lambda equal to zero. And if mu and lambda are equal to zero, we get minus one equal to zero. Mu is the dual variable that is non-negative. It cannot be equal to zero, so it must be positive. And so we can divide by it and we can, uh, you know, discover now from the KKT conditions that those three variables uh, must be uh, equal to uh, one another. Uh, and now we can obtain the variables because, uh, uh, you know, we have two equations, we have uh, two constraints and four variables, but actually three of the variables are equal. So now uh, we have two equations in two unknowns. And the two equations in two unknowns will give us the same quadratic, you know, this quadratic expression that appeared when we used the cauchy schwarz inequality. Uh, and uh, basically uh, we can check that uh, one of the solutions actually is rejected uh, because it will lead uh, to uh, the Lagrange multiplier or dual variable, variable mu to be negative uh, while it should be it should be uh, positive in our case here. So this solution will be rejected and the only accepted solution uh, is uh, that x1 is equal to 3 plus square root uh, 51 and this is uh, the optimal solution because the objective function is just to maximize uh, x1 
uh, and the other uh, three variables are given by this quantity. And then we can basically use the equations obtained from the KKT conditions uh, to also obtain mu and make sure that it is indeed strictly positive. And this is the uh, lost um, Lagrange multiplier lambda. 